السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ والا علیہ و اصحاب ہی اجمعین اما بعد قال تعالی فی کلام المجید اد او الى سبیل رب کا بل حکمہ و علم و عزت الحسنہ و جاد الحم بلتی ہی احسن رب شاہ علی صدری و یسر علی عمری و اہل العبدت من لسانی افقہ قولی the brother uh, our brothers dear brothers the subject before us today the program the subject which has been given to me is the importance of media now we are stay, we are in the year 2019 and we can see it's very clear for any person that the media is having a very big influence over the world there was a time when the system was the religion of the ruler was the religion of the people but now we see that the things have changed there are people who control the media throughout the world and influence thought ideas processes make them think what they want you to think a person is thinking with his own mind he thinks it's my own idea but he is very largely influenced by someone else now he's not a slave he's thinking with his own mind but it's someone else's idea which is being fed to him through the media So here we are in this masjid, in this halaqa, and we have the subject before us, the importance of media. So firstly, we will start from the Islamic perspective. That Islamically, what is the position of media? What is the importance given to media? Is it important? Because the popular perception until some time back was, media, this is not for us. This is for those non-Muslims. There was this kind of a perception. And we can see... this happening in many different areas for example initially when facebook started so people felt facebook this is not for our religious work this is for obscenity for sad book you cannot be on facebook but of course there is the angle of fasad on in facebook there's no doubt about it but that same facebook can be used for dawa also it's a media we find that similarly the television was considered television you you have television in your house huh what kind of a person you are you have television in your house but we find that the same television can be used for dawa alhamdulillah it's a media which can be used for dawa we can have islamic dawa channels alhamdulillah you know about i plus tv so let us start our analysis my first point is stopping the harm stopping the harm is a very important principle in islamic sharia that the harm has to be stopped if there is a harm coming from something that harm needs to be countered now let's identify what is the harm it's not unknown to anyone it's common knowledge any act of terrorism first persons to be blamed are muslims many a times we find after the cases go on for 10 years 15 years then the terror accused are acquitted throughout the world this is the condition many a times people realize much later that no 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 muslims were not involved but you can see the negative propaganda against muslims against islam we can see in generally if you look at generally the world i'm not talking of a specific country we are talking about the general world we are talking about even other countries hmm? since we are in the gulf and a muslim country my but i'm not talking specifically of any country i'm talking about the general world trend we find generally in throughout the world Muslims are generally re- misrepresented in the media. You can see uh, a Muslim how he is shown in the media, what kind of coverage, what kind of role models are presented. This is a Muslim. We can see the kind of media coverage ISIS received. It could have been ignored. It could have been black blackouted. There can be could have been a complete blackout, but no, it got mainstream media coverage, heavy coverage. It was presented as the Islamic State. even though unanimously muslim scholars have condemned the isis as un-islamic as anti-islamic unanimously even though we find that muslim scholars came together so many times they gave fatwas they they conducted programs condemned it but yet this is islamic state how can you do that how can you let them continue to have our kind of name this is not islamic state Similarly, we find the terms used in media like Islamic terrorism, Muslim terrorist. Why are you connecting his religion to terrorism? Our religion is against terrorism. 
Our religion is for peace and kindness and mercy and compassion in the world. Our ter religion doesn't teach terrorism. Similarly, you will find, you will find teachings of Islam, like teachings of Islam, like the marriage system, and now popularly the talaq system, the divorce system. The divorce system, what is being explained and projected before the media is actually not the Islamic system of divorce. If you read the Quran, the Islamic system of divorce is very clear. What does Islam teach about divorce? But things are misrepresented. And the correct picture, is it presented? What is being presented in the name of Islam? We can see in the name of Islam, for example, you will find a Muslim, he will have a taweez in his neck. Huh? Even though our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has taught, Man allaka tamimatan faqad ashraka. Whoever hangs a tamima, he has done shirk. Now he did not say that a tamima with a Quranic verses is okay. Any tamima, it's shirk, he said. You're not allowed to wear that. We're not allowed. And people have to have this, that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, the sample Muslims are those Muslims being presented who are not religious. You will find many a times in the media, in movies and other things. We don't have to find, but people who see their report, they tell us that the person of, with, weak, with a weak character is generally a Muslim. The Muslim is not the person with the strong character. He's the person generally, he's the person with weak character. Or he's the person who's the villain, who's still was sir. He's the, the villain is a, is a Muslim at times. Or the person with weak character. We find uh, wrong role models are created. Muslim masses also who are after all of these things, they are presented that a Muslim marrying a non-Muslim, it's all okay. This is all okay. So this is being presented through the media. Through the media, people are getting this message, even though Islam is opposed to it. Islam teaches us that do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. A slave girl who believes is better than an unbeliever, even though she may allure you. Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse 221. This is what Islam teaches us. But what is being portrayed? No, it's okay. It's okay. So Muslims, they start losing religious commitment by being overexposed to the media and the different forms of media. They start becoming weaker Muslims. And it starts having an effect on their religion gradually. On the other hand, non-Muslims are turned off. They feel put off after seeing all of this until it becomes established. You tell one lie many times, it starts being considered as the truth. That no, Islam is teaching this, is teaching this wrong thing. Now here comes the importance of media where we are supposed to do something about it. My dear brothers, let's go back in time. Let us see, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, was there any such media which was used by the mushriks of Makkah? And that media they were using to malign Islam. What did the Prophet ﷺ do? Let us look at some examples. For example, the mushriks of Makkah had poets. That was the time. It was the time of poetry. And being a time of poetry, through poets, they could, they tried, they wrote verses against the Prophet ﷺ. Poetry making fun of the Prophet ﷺ. And people were fond of poetry. The way today, anchors, news anchors, confidence, with confidence, they present statements. And people think this is the truth. And this is the way things are happening in the world. So we find that that was a time of poets. And we find that there is an entire surah in the Quran called the poets. The the surah, surah Shura, Shuara, the poets, Surah number 26. And the last verse, the last second last verse of the of Surah Shuara, what does it say? Washwara yattabihumul gawun. The poets, they are followed by the misled. Don't you see how fikulli wadin yahimun, how they roam around in every valley blind. And they say that which they don't do. Poets, they have been discredited in the Quran. And then Allah says, Illa amanu. Except those who have Iman. The, the poets with Iman, Allah has given an exception. Illa amanu. And wantasaru ma zulimu. And after the zulm is done on them, then they come out in defense. Allah has praised that in these verses of the Quran. So we find, for example, the Prophet Wasallam, he encouraged some poets to come forward. We find, for example, among them was the poet Hassan bin Sabit. 
radiyallahu an. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ihjuhum, ihjuhum, aw hajihim, wa Jibrilu mark." The hadith of Sahih Bukhari. That give them reply in poetry. Give them full reply in poetry, fitting reply in poetry. Jibril is with you. Jibril is with you. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that your words they affect them not hunnably. Hadith of Mustafa Ahmad, like like arrows. Your words affect them like arrows. So that was the media used at that time, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam countered that media by creating his own media. creating his own poets encouraging his poets to come forward so it was not ignored how we muslims ignore today no we don't do anything let them do this is not our field this is the normal state of affairs most of the places we are not having a voice in the media we muslims are lacking voice in the media this is the sad story so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do that we know that before islam in those ages the mushriks of makkah used to use the safa mountain for making their proclamations if they want to wanted to gather people for some important proclamation some important message they would use the safa mountain and there was a culture system called the naked warner the naked warner a person would go on the mountain he would remove his clothes and then people would choose there's something very serious and then people would come what's the matter so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also climbed climbed on safa mountain but he was selective he did not follow their system entirely he used their media of of safa the mount safa and he proclaimed from there and he passed on the message of islam selectively now this is also sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is also sunnah of the prophet so what should we do should we climb any mountain in our area vicinity ha huh? should we try to find that there's any mountain in your area in your city in your we should do that try to find some high mountain and we we can also go and scream from there sunna act on the sunna what do you think should we do that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did it we do his ittiba we should also climb on some mountain somewhere and scream from there but even if we scream nobody will gather here today because that's not the system today Mount Safa was the media of that time. Now the media has gone on television. It has gone on satellite. It has gone on the social media. So use of the media is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which we should also do ittiba. So my brothers, as we go ahead, let me explain some things. We find, for example, Allah has mentioned in many places. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Balle go anni walawaya." pass it on from me even if it is one verse the word ballig all the hadith with the word ballig for example at the time of the farewell pilgrimage the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said li uballigh ash-shahid al-ghaiba those who are present pass it on to those who are absent now note the words he did not say pass it on only by one to one talking he said pass it on the words of how to pass on these are the means we can use now we are using mic loud speaker we are using print medium we are using the television pass it on is what really matters similarly we find that islam has taught that we should not conceal the message from allah allah has had sent several prophets before muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were so many prophets and we find that allah has said that wali kulli qaumin had for every nation he sent a guide and wa in min ummatin illa khala fiha nazir surah 35 was 24 there was never a nation without a warning warner having lived, lived among them so these nations they had guides warners prophets many prophets at one time at time certain times one city many prophets were sent but when muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent allah has kept a different exam for the followers of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the people of the world now the system is that no prophet is going to come he was the last and final messenger but he came at the beginning of the time when there was a major development in media and we find that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made his followers as those who would pass on the message he said those who are present pass it on to those who are absent so it's our responsibility to pass on so much that if we don't pass on 
So there are warnings in the Quran and the Sunnah for those who conceal the message. Many Muslims think that, oh, we are following Islam, we are acting on Islam, we are praying a salah. And even if we don't say anything to anybody, we are at least doing our part. But this is not enough. Why? Because the followers of Muhammad sallallahu they have the responsibility to pass on the message of the truth, the message from Allah, which all the prophets passed to the people of the world. It's our responsibility. If we don't do it, Allah said in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse 159, 160, ma min al-bayyinati wal huda. Indeed, those who yaktumuna, hide, conceal, ma anzalna min al-bayyinati wal huda, the guidance and the proof, the clear evidences, which I have sent down. Allah has sent down clear evidences. Allah has sent down guidance. Those people who conceal this. So Allah says, On them is the curse of Allah. Allah said, Even though I have told in the book that this is for people. Allah has told clearly that this is for all people. Allah says, those who conceal, on them is the curse of Allah. And the curse of all those entitled to curse. Everyone's curse is on such people who conceal. So how can we be at peace? How can we be at with honor and glory and respect? We will be humiliated in the world with all this curse coming on us because we Muslims have not passed on. Let us not try to think that yes, yes, everything is okay. Everyone knows about Islam. They don't know about the Islam given by Muhammad sallallahu They know about what? A religion which teaches terrorism. They know about a religion which teaches uh, oppression and so on, wrong things which have been spread in the name of Islam. The pure message of Islam has not reached people. Most people don't know. It is our responsibility. Now here comes another importance of the media because passing on the message is what really matters. How do we pass on? How do we make it reach? We have to use all possible ways. Brothers, I want to show you an analysis and I have my conclusions. I want to share my conclusions with you. We find that the television was invented in, uh, we find, 1930. Uh, before 1930, by 1930, only 50, 60 homes had television. But by the time 1960, people reached, we reached 1960. By that time, 9 out of 10, 10 homes in America had a television in 1960. Okay, now look at this, 1960. See, we see today the Western world is, is full of obscenity. Marriage, the culture of marriage, the system of marriage has been destroyed. People don't want to marry. marry. Very, the, it's very late in, in their priority list, marriage. Family system has been destroyed. Obscenity is on the rise. Very heavy obscenity is there. But do you know this was not always? I want to share, share my, my conclusions. Uh, in UK, in UK, it's come in the census report that in 2018, 47.5% of children were being born outside marriage in UK. In America, the figure is 40%. In all the countries of the European Union, the average is 40%. And there are countries like France, which have crossed 50%. There are countries which have 65% children being born out of marriage. Many countries have crossed 50%. And the figure is steadily increasing. But this was not the case always. We go back in time, 1979. According to the UK census reports, we find in 1979, 11% children were out of marriage. 1979. 1988, 25% of children out of marriage. Now, 47.5% children out of marriage. So the trend started, this trend started from when? We can see clearly it started somewhere 1979, it had reached 11%. Color television was present in every home by 1960. Nine out of 10 homes. And this was used big time to promote obscenity. Big time to change cultural values, change moral values. Imagine, in America, there are millions of children who are being raised up by only their mother. Fathers nowhere there. Why? Because the father was not committed enough to marry the mother before the child was born. So the mother is playing the role of the father as well as the mother. And on top of that, she's also shouldering the financial responsibilities. The father is gone. And this is not 
one, two rare cases, millions of children. This is the case. And it, it, has, been, it has come in reports, 25% of such women, they go through psychological problems. Single parent homes where the mother is the only parent. 25% of such women, they go through psychological problems, bearing the stress of father and mother both. It's difficult. Now, here what happens? The child who's born without marriage, he won't have rights and inheritance. He won't have rights of maintenance. What's protection? Where is, where is justice for that child? Where is justice for that woman? There's a full system of exploitation. And it's being sold in the name of women's liberation. You sell exploitation in the name of liberation. And you can do that through the media. Now, here comes, here are we. Some people today also, they say, hey, some media, no, we don't need all this media. First, we will talk. Fine, talk. Who's stopping you from talking? But the world is a different place. I want to show you with statistics. We find that the world population in 1825, we are in 2019, less than 200 years back. 1825, the world population for the first time reached, reached 100 million. Uh, am I getting it right? One, one billion. Huh? One billion is how much? 1,000 million. Correct. Okay. One billion. First billion. In, uh, actually, 100 is in crores. 100 crores. Because we use crores in India. I remember the figure in crores. But in billion, it is 1 billion. It reached in 1825. We come to somewhere 1920s. Before 1920. Less than 100 years. From 1 billion, it became 2 billion. But from the 19... Teens, uh, 1919s or something. Till now, from 2 billion, it became 3 billion, 4 billion, 5 billion, 6 billion, 7 billion. Now it's 7.5 billion. 7.5 billion people stay in the world. All of these people, out of all of these people, in less than 100 years, the population of the world has increased from 2 billion to 7.5 billion. Less than 100 years. Now, who, how, how did this happen? Without the will of Allah, not one soul can come in this world. So many souls have come in the world with whose will? With Allah's will. But at the same time, we find that the media also came on the rise. When the population of the world was increasing, mass media came on the rise to make, for what? To make what? Messages reach them. And I believe that this is the right of us Muslims. Allah has made this happen for us Muslims to take the message of Islam. So we can effectively take the message of Islam to the people of the world using the media. How the Prophet ﷺ used media? We also use media. There are so many examples. We find that the Prophet ﷺ used the time when people used to gather at the time of Hajj, pre-Islamic Hajj, the Hajj before Islam, before Muhammad ﷺ. That was remnant from Ibrahim al-Islam's time. Mushriks of Makkah also used to do some form of Hajj. So... In those, at the time of Hajj, when the different tribes would gather, the Prophet ﷺ would use their opportunity. We, we read in the Quran, Surah Taha, Surah 20, that Musa al Islam, when he challenged the magicians of Firon, he said, Ma'idukum yaw muzina. Our promise, your promise is on the day of the festival. Musa al Islam did not challenge in secret in a closed room that come, the magicians of Firon, come, we will have a contest. He challenged them on the day of Yom Uzzina. Imam al Kathir Rahimahullah says that Yom Uzzina is the day of the festival. And he said that the time that we will contest is the time of Duha. Surah Taha, Surah 20, verse 66. So the time of Duha was selected. Why? Imam al Kathir Rahimahullah, he says that the time of Duha was selected by Musa alayhi salam because the light is the best at that time. And what miracle he's going to perform, it should be visible also. Nobody can see in the dark. He didn't select that time. He selected the time when the light was good. This is also evidence when we in our studio for recording, we use lights. People say, why are you using lights? We need, we need that. It should be clear. Everything should become clear, isn't it? So we find that Musa al-Islam selected that time. You know the famous story of the magician, the boy and the magician, where the boy who had been given the miracle and he finally, it's a long story. It's in commentary of Surah Buruj. You, if you read... Uh, Surah Buruj, you will find the story of in the commentary that this, this boy finally when he was contesting the king, he said you gather everyone 
and then you take an arrow and say bismillah and then you kill me then only you'll be able to be successful and that was the reason why so many people got iman so he also used the media of his time the prophet sallallahu used letters he wrote letters that was the media of his time he sent to the kings and he used that system to pass on the message of islam in the most effective medium of that time we find today we have the media where we can just press one button and thousands of letters will come out that, that is pamphlets which we can use so my brothers here we are and it is important that we use this this is happening by the will of allah for example there's a hadith the prophet sallallahu said inna min ashratis saa an yuzahar al qalam indeed it is from the signs of the day of judgment that the pen will become very common you know what Listen to this hadith. I'm going to do an experiment now. It's from the signs of the day of judgment that the pen will become very common. Okay. Now, how many of you have a pen in your pocket? I also don't have. How many? Just let, let's see how many of us have. I can't believe it. Not even one person has a pen. Huh? But you know what? When we write on mobile, this is also data written to disk. Written to disk. There's a pen here on the camera. The data is being written to disk. So these are also forms of pens. And pens are common. This is the form of a pen. It's a very powerful pen. It's a pen. <laughs> so we find that using all of these means to, passing, to pass on the message of Islam, so that how are we supposed to reach across to 7.5 billion people? India is 135 crores, 1 billion, 350 million people. How are we supposed to pass on the message of Islam without using the media? Because Allah has sent so many human beings in the world and he has also sent the media and he has made it permissible. The verse in the Quran, Surah 2, verse 29, Allah says, Allah alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jami'a. Whatever is on the earth, I have created for you. Allah says, Allah is the one who has created for you what is whatever is on earth. Now on the earth, we find the, the mobile, we find this mic, we also find the camera. Whatever is on earth, Allah says, I have created for you. If someone says that something is not to be used, there should be explicit evidence for that. Explicit evidence for that. For that. And uh, also there's a, the, a qaeda of the lesser of the two harms. The lesser of the two harms, even at times, many scholars, they're not in favor of video recording. But they say to counter the wrong as a lesser of the two harms, it is to be used. For example, in a, in a battle, suppose there's a Muslim army, but in Islam, you're not allowed to burn anybody to death. It's not allowed. But when explosives are used by any army in a battlefield, so people die after being burned to death. So have scholars said that Muslim army should only go with a sword in hand and should not use those. See, Islam has allowed the Muslim countries can also defend themselves from all wrong things. And of course, uh, th there's further, further to it. But now let us understand what has Islam taught. There's a qaeda of the lesser of the two harms. So my dear brothers, I have explained certain evidences why we should be using the media to pass on the pure message of Tawheed, of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, the pure message of Islam to the people of the world. But do you know, we are in a very stagnant state. People are not realizing it's our responsibility to pass on the message. See, if we realize the responsibility, we will feel the same thing which pushed Muhammad Salasim to go on top of the Mount Safa. What was it that took him there? It was the responsibility and the feeling that, yes, we have to do something. See, I'll tell you something. You know what's our sad story? There are so many scholars who give lectures. There's nobody to record them. Everybody sits with mobile phones in their pocket. There's nobody there to record it. Common story. And you know, there are so many people who record it, but that's, it, ends, it ends only with them. And there are so many people who record on camera and it ends there. It, does, it doesn't reach, see the light of the day. I've seen it happening for years. Okay. Now, after this, there are some people who are dedicated. I'm not blaming anybody here. Please don't offend it. There are some people who are dedicated. They edit the video and they put on YouTube. But do you know YouTube today? YouTube today is saturated. YouTube today, when you put a video, if you if there's obscenity, the people of obscenity, they are one jama'ah, all of them. 
They are there to support. And you know what's the support? I'll tell you what is the support. YouTube is a software. It is not a human being. YouTube brings up some videos as suggested videos. And it doesn't bring up some certain videos. Certain videos are ignored. Do you know most Islamic videos? You will see 25 views, 50 views, 100 views, 70, 30, 15, 18, something like this. Most Islamic videos. Why? There's a reason. Why? What is the reason? YouTube has its own algorithms and it has its own system. And YouTube sees, has the software. As a software, what does it see? Some video is getting a lot of comments. It's getting a lot of shares, a lot of likes. So there's a lot of responsiveness. People see the title, okay, I'll click. So what happens is YouTube realizes that this video has some content, which is very good. I'm not saying that all Islamic content is ignored. There is some Islamic content, which is making, getting views. Alhamdulillah. But most of our ulama, they're giving talks. Even if they reach YouTube, there's nobody to watch. You know why? Lacking support. Support of whom? People like you and me. How? Suppose you are from a masjid. First of all, you should have your own YouTube channel. We should, should have our own YouTube channel. And when a video is uploaded, then the people of the masjid should go and forward it, should go and like it, should go and comment. They should be interested. And when they do that, when comments come for a video, YouTube's algorithm realizes that there's something in this video which is very good. So that's why I should show this as a suggested video. That video has higher chances of coming up. So here it is a role where all of us are part of it. Everyone has some contacts. You can surely forward some video with some good words. Uh, surely you should see. And this is a form of cooperation. Of course, we should forward only authentic content. We should not forward everything. We should forward authentic material and not uh, spam and wrong things that are being spread around by the social media. So my, my dear brothers, what is the action plan? Are we going to just live our lives in... Uh, in the, you know, the glooms of silence that the Muslim Ummah today is in. Are we going to come out resurgent? Are we going to use the systems to pass on the message of Islam? Do you know, until a few, few years back, the media was in the hands of only a few people. Few people were controlling the media. And they were controlling the minds. But ever since social media has evolved, it has its evil. It has its, its obscenity. It has, it has its power of corrupting our young men and women. But on the other hand, media is now no longer in the hands of few people. It can be used by everyone. Huh? Everyone can do something at least. Even with your contacts, with your WhatsApp groups, whatever you, you're having, you can have some influence. And with your mobile phone cameras, if there's a shake and you can see there's no camera here, with your phone, phone camera, you can become the cameraman. And you can make sure that it's as good as, you know, share. You just press the share button and the video will be on YouTube. So I'm not here publicizing uh, some one particular platform, but we have to use all available mediums for passing on the message of Islam. So my dear brothers, uh, let us go from here. As we go from here, as we finish, reach our time of iftar, let us have some intention and action plan. It's not good to sit in a lecture and just passively sit and okay, go. And I didn't know there was something good at least. So yes, sometimes we feel motivated, but let's go ahead with an action plan. First action plan. Let us be part of acquiring and passing on the message of Islam. Let us realize it's our responsibility. It's the real responsibility of this ummah. Nobody is going to come. No prophet is going to come. If we don't pass on, then we are to be blamed. I'll tell you one hadith. It's in Abu Daud. It's in Tirmidhi and Abu Daud. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Lata marunna bil maruf. You surely will pass on the... You will surely... You surely should... Command what is good. Meaning, command what is good and make sure that you do it. And stop people from doing wrong things. Tell them to do good things, stop them from doing wrong things. Otherwise, Allah will send a punishment on you. You will do dua to Allah. Oh Allah, remove this punishment from us and Allah will not answer your prayers. Why Allah won't answer? Because why did the punishment come on you? For what? For concealing the message. Now you are not passing on the message and you want that punishment to go and you don't want to correct yourself. What wrong you're doing, you're not correcting yourself and you want yet the punishment should be moved away from you. This is not going to happen. Allah will not answer your prayers. People will say, Allah help us. Allah will not help at that time because they have not corrected themselves. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah verse 160, 
Allah says, accept those illa ladina tabu, accept those who do tawba, waslahu, and correct themselves. Fabayanu, and openly declare the truth. Faulaika atubu alayhim, I turn to these people. Wana tawabur rahim, and indeed I am of returning most merciful. So, my dear brothers, we need to respond to realize from within. It's our responsibility to talk. And you know what? Allah's mercy, alhamdulillah, we have one of the best, the best, one of the best, the best system of media internally. You know our masjids, this is our media. Alhamdulillah. Without one poster, without one pamphlet, in Juma Salah, we have our, our people. Alhamdulillah. Everyone is coming without seeing a single pamphlet or poster. Have to come. Alhamdulillah. This is our media. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, Amara bi bina al masjidi fi dur wa antu nazif. He commanded that make masjids in your in your tribes in your places. He commanded the Sahaba. Some people say no, the only masjid was Masjid Nabi and Masjid Quba. No, he told people that in your tribe, wherever you are, which places your places, make masjids. I want want to nazif and keep them clean. So this was the system of media. And we have the best system of media. We could give one azan. Everybody knows it's time for salah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ballego anni walawaya. Pass it on from me, even if it is one verse. You know one verse? Pass it on. This is what every mouth is, is, an, uh, is media. We have our word of mouth media, alhamdulillah. Very strong media this is. This is very powerful media. So we have our media, alhamdulillah. And we will use all the media available because Allah is the one who has created it. Allah is the one who has created you and what you do. What we do is a creation of Allah. It's not our creation because we are not Rabb. The Rabb and Creator is Allah. Meaning anything is happening in the world, it's not happening without the will of Allah. It's happening because of the will of Allah. All the technology that has been invented, all the devices that have been made, they've been made because Allah willed it to be made. It cannot be made without Allah wanting it. Do you know, they discovered... The waves was samai that raj. Allah says the sky and the sky that raj, which sends back, sends back. So we find that the waves which make of our uh, so many of our uh, technologies work, they are sent back by the sky. They don't go out in space. They are sent back by the sky. The sky also sends back things which are coming from outside. It also sends back things which are coming from inside. So this existed long back. The universe was created. The system existed. Our mobile phones are working due to a certain technology which existed in the system made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since millions of years. Allah, God, the universe Allah made had that system which is making our phones work. Today we realize it, but it was there since earlier. Allah is the one who's put that technology around. So why is it there? For whom? Who has the biggest right over it? Which people will have the biggest right? The people who pass on the message of Islam, they have the biggest right. So we should not think that this is happening, this, is, this technology was discovered by so-and-so. No, whoever discovered it, it is there in the universe because Allah wants it to be there. And this is there for whom? So that the slaves of Allah can get the message from Allah. We have the right over it to use it to pass on the message of Islam. Huh? So this is something which is very important. So my dear brothers, let's start with first responsibility. We feel that responsibility. It's not that I'll offer my salah and I'm fine. No, it's not fine. We know Surah Al-Asr. We know the, the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, man is in loss. Except illa ladheena amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasa bil haqqa ta'asa bil sabi. Except those who believe, have do righteous deeds and pass on, exhort the truth and exhortation of patience. This is part of it. Second part, let us play our role. Or what in what we can do in passing on the message. See, I know we all are sitting. Brothers, let's not talk of other people. Let's talk of ourselves. Among us, there are two types of people. People who talk for Allah and people who don't talk for Allah. They talk for themselves. Yes, they don't have tongues. It's not that they don't have tongues. They have tongues. But they don't talk for Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ, what he said? He said, anni aya. Pass it on from me, even if it is one verse. You know, one verse... Pass on one verse at least. This was the prophetic method of changing people. He did not say pass at least 100 verses. At least learn 100. He said one verse. Like you will find many hadith like this. Sahih Bukhari, there's another hadith. 
Prophet said, Ittaqunnar, wala bi nisf tamr. Save yourself from the fire, even if it is by giving half a date. There are two types of people. People who spend in the way of Allah and there are people who don't spend in the way of Allah. So Allah said, at least give half the date, the Prophet said. At least half a date, half a date. So person will think half a date, there's no problem, I'll give half. One date I'll give, no problem. One verse of the Quran I'll pass on, no problem. But when he passes on one verse, he has come out from the list of people who don't talk and he has come in the list of people who talk. When he gives half a date, he has come out from the list of people who don't spend in the way of Allah. Now he's in the list of people who spend in the way of Allah. So this is the starter. You know, the starting the car is the tricky part. If you start the car, running, uh, if I to move, we find it's less resource intensive. Starting is more resource intensive. It's more difficult. During takeoff, a pilot has to focus more. But after takeoff, he can even have a coffee. So what do we see is that this starting stage is very tough. So at least pass on one verse. Hmm? Every one of us should pass on at least one verse. And we should just realize our responsibility in passing on. And you know this one verse is very powerful. Why? When you tell someone, suppose I'll just take a, uh, let's have a demo. Suppose a, a book, suppose a decent book. Uh, let's have a book. Okay. Can you see this book? I'm asking you a question. Wherever you are from, if we distribute this type of a book and give it to every single person, every single person, how many people are going to read? How many people are going to read? Just percentage. Let's have a guess. Estimate. Just your estimate. 5%. Okay. Maybe less than 5%. 95% won't read. Now you come in the picture. You say, okay, I want to tell you one thing. One verse. Pass it on. Even if it is one verse. You know one verse, pass it on. So when you tell that, I want to tell you one thing. You know one verse, pass on one verse. You know two verses, two verses. Five verses, five verses. Ten verses, ten verses. You say, do you want to know more? Do you want to know more? Read this book. Now, will the number increase? Will it remain the same or will it reduce? Huh? Now it will increase. Why? One verse. You tell, you want to know more? I'll send you a video. Now you see this video. So we are not having our support system actually. Do you know our channel, our channel, Islamic channel? We started in uh, 2015. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we got the license from the government of India. And by Allah's grace, it's reached 22.5 million homes of India. Uh, but the thing is, we had, we've seen this experience. The number of homes we are reaching, if every, every home we get even 10 paise per month, it's easy for us to run the channel. But what is our support system? We have seen the support system is severely lacking, especially Muslims feel that we don't need to have any media for dawa. Our tongue is enough. Use our tongues. But we need to use every single way. And Allah says in the Quran, Cooperate in acts of righteousness and piety. Don't cooperate in acts of sin and rancor. So my brothers, I have shared with you some things about how destructive the media can be, how it can malign, how it can make the message of truth look as falsehood and falsehood look as truth and how effectively people are using this to convey their false messages and how we can use the same media to pass on the message of the truth, message of Islam. Finally, I'll end this talk with one verse from the Quran. It's from Surah, Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, verse 81. Allah says, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقُّ وَزَحَقَ الْبَاتِ Say the truth has arrived. And falsehood has perished. In al batila kana zahuka, for falsehood by its nature was bound to perish. So we have a difference. We have the truth. We are not passing on wrong things. We are talking about passing on the message of Allah, which mankind needs. People need this message. May Allah Rabbil Alameen make us of those who pass on the message of Islam and are a part of those who, are, who work towards the cause of taking the message of Islam to the people of the world. Wa akur davana and alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.